that my neighbor is to love him as myself. This way, girl. To love, honor, and succor my father and mother. To love, make haste, make haste. Just wait here, my lass. To honor and obey the This child is very young to be sent alone. She had better be put to bed at once. She looks tired. Are you tired? A little, Mum. And hungry, too, no doubt. Miss Miller, let her have some supper before she goes to bed. Very well, Miss Temple. Now, Jane Eyre, is this the first time you have left your parents to come to school? I have no parents, Mum. How long have they been dead? Since I was a baby, Mum. Can you read and write? Yes, Mum. And so? A little, Mum. I hope you will be a good child. Go with Miss Miller now. Yes, Mum. Time, Belle. We have no time for idleness here. You will learn to live by the bell. Yes, miss. about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Sit. Abominable. I'd like to make Mr. Brocklehurst eat the whole lot. Girls, you will be punished if you are disrespectful to our benefactor. which you could not eat. You must be hungry. I have ordered that bread and cheese shall be served to all. It is on my responsibility. Will you? Sit still, 
bones. Obey your teachers, girls. Eat your breakfast. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the father of the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and do my commandment. Glorious. To the garden. Is your book interesting? I like it. What's it about? Emily! There are no pictures. I like wild, mysterious stories with pictures. <coughs> <coughs> Do you want me to go away? I did want someone to talk to. call this an institution? Is it different from other schools? It's partly a charity school. You and I, charity children. Have you been here long? Two years. Are you an orphan? My mother is dead. My father married again. Are you happy here? You ask rather too many questions. I want to read. Burns, you are slouching. Sit up straight immediately. He was deeply religious and much influenced by favourites. He made promises to the people which he failed to keep and was the author of his own downfall. Oh, that is nicely done, Jane. Thank you, Miss Smith. Here did Charles I come to the throne? Fuller. Harrison. Sixteen. Sixteen ten? Wrong. Burns. Sixteen twenty five, miss. Someone must have prompted you. No, miss. <laughs> I refuse to believe a word you say. And I insist on you holding your head up. I will not have you standing before me in that attitude. Pay attention, girls. His first favourite was the dashing George Villiers, Duke of Buckingham. He was assassinated in 1628. Charles then fell under the influence of his wife. He was a Catholic. We all know how evil popery is. That turned the people even more against Charles. Many of them were known as Puritans. Burns. Why were they called Puritans? Good. Because they wished to purify the church by dropping out many Catholic practices. You are glib enough. But you still defy me by letting your head droop. Pull out your hand. The children run to lift their sides return. Upon his knees, the envious kiss his You dirty, disagreeable girl. You did not clean your nails this morning. Yes, Miss I did. You contradict me. You dare to contradict me and lie to me. Did I not say you were a liar? Fetch me the instrument of correction. Your hand. The short, the simple, annals of the poor. 
broke my thread. The taste of pergamon gave a cross to the palace. And all that beauty, all that wealth, are gone. Harden, girl. Nothing will correct you. Take the rod back. The path of glory. Jane, you have dropped my skein. Jane, what is the matter with you? My beauty cries in to be the beast of faults. If memory owes to the trophy's reign. If she struck me with that rod, I should get it from her hand and break it under her nose. Probably you would do nothing of the sort. If you did, Mr. Brocklehurst would expel you. It is far better to endure patiently. The Bible bids us return good for evil. If people were always kind and obedient to those who are cruel and unjust, the wicked would have it all their own way. They would never feel afraid, but go worse and worse. When we are struck at, without reason, we should strike back very hard. I'm sure I should. So hard as to teach the person never to do it again. Christ says, love your enemies. And I should love. Mrs. Reed and her son John, which I can never do. Who are they? Oh dear, it's evening study. I'll tell you on the way down. My first quarter at Lowood seemed an age of cold, hunger, hardship and heavy tasks. But at its end, I had made progress. This is excellent, Jane. No wonder you're ahead of your class. All your teachers praise you. Do you find the girls friendly? They are now, Mum. Good. I like your pictures. I shall give you drawing lessons myself. Oh, thank you, Mum. And I think you're capable of learning French. I shall speak to Madame Piro. You may go. Thank you, Mum. But there was one visitor to Lowood, of whose arrival I was in constant dread. The classes continue. Back to work, girls. Madame Piro. Monsieur. Godless vanity here in an evangelical school. Every girl's hair will be cut short and these top knots removed. I shall send a barber tomorrow. But, sir. Let them resume their work. But, oh, Miss Tickle. Silence. Sit down, girls. Continue with your work. I have a matter to discuss with you. The account. I'm being forced to spend far too much. We are being most economical, sir. Allow me to disagree with you, Mr. You are not being most economical. If you were, I should have no need for complaints. As it is, I must direct you to trim your cloth by one. Your directions shall be attended to, sir. Hmm. It is the new pupil. I have a word to say respecting her. Fetch that stool. Go. Stand upon. Face the classes. Miss Temple. Teachers. Girls. You all see this girl. You see she is yet young. Who would think that the evil one had already found a servant in her. And yet, such, I grieve to say, is the case. You must be on your guard against her. You must shun her example, avoid her company, and exclude her from your sports. Teachers, you must watch her, punish her body to save her soul, if indeed such salvation be possible, for my tongue falters while I tell it, 
this girl, this child of a Christian land, this girl is a liar. How shocking. This I learned from her benefactress. The lady who adopted her in her orphan state, reared her as her own daughter, and whose kindness this unhappy girl replayed with a, an ingratitude so bad, so dreadful, that at last her excellent patroness was obliged to separate her from her own young ones fearful lest her vicious example should contaminate their purity. She has sent her here to be healed. Teachers, I beg of you not to spare her if she is to be saved. Miss Temple, we will now inspect the rest of the premises. Be seated. Let her stand a half hour longer on that stool. Face the classes. And let no one speak to her for the remainder of the day. a liar. Jane, you are mistaken. After what Mr. Brocklehurst said. He is little liked here. Besides, Jane, if all the world hated you, you would not be without friends. But I cannot bear to be alone and hated. Jane, you think too much of the love of human beings. You're too impulsive, too... Vehement. I came on purpose to find you, Jane Eyre. I want you in my room. You may come to Helen Burns. Is it all over? Have you cried your grief away? I'm afraid I shall never do that. Why? I have been wrongly accused, Mum, and everybody now will think me wicked. We shall think you what you prove yourself to be, my child. Tell me, the lady who Mr. Brocklehurst called your benefactress is Mrs. Reed, your uncle's wife? Yes, Mum. He is dead and she didn't want me, but all the servants knew he made a Helen violence. has told me your story, my dear, as you told it to her. Is all that true? Yes, Mum. Did she tell you about the Red Room? I shall never forget the I day I have heard all about that, Jane. Is there anyone else who can verify your story? Betty might. She's one of the servants. Oh, there is Mr Lloyd, the physician. He came to see me after my fate. I know something of Mr Lloyd. I shall write to him. And if his reply agrees with your statement, well, we shall know what to do. Helen, how are you tonight? Have you coughed much today? Not quite so much, I think, ma'am. And the pain in your chest? It is a little better. You two are my guests. I'm neglecting you. Come to the table, girls. Jane, Helen. Thank you, Barbara. Can you bring a little more bread and butter? There is not enough for three. Um, well, uh... I did ask Mrs. Harden, ma'am, but um, she said she wouldn't. Not after Mr. Brockle had sold us to her. Very well. Thank you, Barbara. You may go. Fortunately, I can supply the deficiency. I had meant to give you this to take away with you. But we shall feast now, shall we? So good to see you both smiling. 
Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I have inspected the dormitory, <coughs> and once more your drawer was a disgrace. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You will wear that until bedtime. Take your seat. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff may comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup. Mademoiselle, this is your hour of recreation. I shall leave you now. No noise, please. All present, Miss Temple. I have an announcement to make. It concerns the charges which were alleged in your presence against Jane Eyre one week ago. Jane Eyre, come forward. Up here. Stand beside me. Teachers, girls, I have made inquiries concerning these charges of a person who is fully informed and utterly reliable and I am most happy to be able to pronounce her innocent of every imputation made against her. You may step down, Jane. I'm so glad, my dear. I'm not at all surprised, Jane. Bravo, mademoiselle. Je suis contente pour vous. You are fortunate in your protector, child. Let the classes resume. Well, Jane. I know that you will work harder than ever to prove your merit. I will, Miss Temple. I would not leave Lowood now for Gateshead and all its luxuries, ma'am. It was Typhus. Overcrowding, lack of sanitation, semi-starvation, and previously neglected illnesses had made most of the pupils an easy prey to the deadly fever. Teachers helped those girls to pack who had friends or relatives able and willing to take them away from the seat of contagion. Many went home only to die. Some died at the school and were buried quickly and quietly. Miss Temple is waiting for you in the sick room. I shall stay and help her. What is it, girl? I have other patients, you know. Where is Helen Burns? She has not gone down to the garden yet. Helen Burns? No. I fear she took a turn for the worse. She is very poorly. Her complaint is not typhus, you know. It is consumption. You are a God-fearing child. You have seen other friends go to their maker. Helen is not with us for long. When the typhus fever died away at Lowood, a new management committee was formed as a result of public indignation at the abuses which had caused the epidemic and condemned its many victims. Mr. Brocklehurst managed to retain his post because of his wealth and family connections. 
but Lowood became in time a truly useful and noble institution. I was a pupil there for six more years, and as for the two years which followed... Miss Eyre, please, Miss Eyre. Very well, Mary. B-O-U-G-H, bow of a tree, B-O-W, bow. <laughs> very good. I'm very pleased with all of you girls. Now, I would like you to learn the next ten words in your book Thank for you. tomorrow. Thank you. And you may start now. Thank you. Yes, I was a teacher and loved it. But since Helen's death, my one, my only, my dear friend remained Miss Temple. And a day came that was inevitable. God bless the bride and groom! God bless the bride and groom! God bless the bride I tired of the routine of eight years in one afternoon. I longed for change, for liberty, or at the very least a new servitude. What do people do to get a new place? Apply to friends? I have no friends. Or advertise. A young lady accustomed to tuition is desirous of meeting with a situation where the children are under 14. Address J.E. Post Office Lofen. 